What's up, you guys? Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. This is 6.1, and in this video, we are going to learn about the sum of inverses. So, we have a formula that deals with the inverse function. Now, you probably have seen this somewhere in your textbook or have heard about it, but for those who haven't, we have a formula that goes like this. We have a regular function, dx, okay? And then if you have an, a sum, well, I'm sorry, plus, and then we have f of a, and then f of b, and you have the inverse function, dx, then what this would equal to this will equal to b times f of b minus a times f of a. Okay, so this this sum here is equal to b times f of b minus a uh, times f of a. And pretty much, you probably have seen this in other videos, but I guess just to show it to you, um, whenever we have, let's say, some function here, right? Uh, what's going on is you have you're integrating f of x and it goes from here to here right so we have here this so we're going from a to b however when you integrate the inverse function with the bounds of f of a to f of b you're going from f of a To f of b and you're technically taking the integral of the inverse which would actually look like this okay so what you're doing is you're pretty much integrating the area of this of this trapezoid plus the integral of this trapezoid Okay, and what this is, is this is pretty much a square, right? You technically have a square, that's a, I'm not very good with tracing lines, uh, but pretty much this area here is equal to well here this was f this is f of a times a right this this well it's not really square now I think about it this rectangle I guess you can say this box this is f f of a times a so a times f of a that's the area of this square or this box and then f of b times b that's the area of this big rectangle box as well or square so what we have, the area of this, of the sum, is f of b times b minus a times f of a. And that's where, that, that's where this comes from, because of this. Okay? So conceptually, you're integrating a rectangular box uh, minus an empty box here. That's what this is uh, geometrically. Okay? Equationally, we get this, we get this, oh, wow, this is not supposed to happen, um, but I'll just go like this. But equationally, uh, this comes from integration by parts, so you can actually do integration by parts as well, right? If you do, if you let u equal the inverse, if you force substitute, u equals inverse of f, then you get f of u equal to x, and this would give us f prime of u du equal dx, and you will end up with a b f of x dx plus here we get a b as well, 
and you end up with uh, u, this is u, f prime of u, du, right? Of course, they're just variables, so we can just interchange them. And because they have the same bounds, we can put them together. And you notice that this is, what is this? This is a reverse product rule. This is a reverse product rule. This is equal to x times f of x. Or, uh, or instead of reverse product rule, it's just integration by parts. But reverse product rule, technically, this is where we get b times f of b minus a times f of a. And that's where this comes from. OK? So this is our formula here. This is our inverse, um, a sum of inverse. This is our sum of inverses. Okay. All right, let's get into the examples. Okay, so let's start with a beginner example of using the sum of inverses. So here, we can easily see, well, we have sine x squared, uh, a sine x squared type of function, and then the square root of inverse sine. So we notice that there is some inverse, inverse functions going on here. Now, the reason why there are some constants here is because of bound manipulation, right? Remember that the, the sum of inverses goes from a to b of f, f of a, f of b, with inverse f. So in integration B competitions, they will modify this integral here to make this bound the same as this. And I believe that's what they did here, right? We have a square root of pi over two and we have a pi over two inside here. So because of that, we would have to modify and check, uh, make sure that this is an inverse of this, okay? So for now, we'll take this apart so we're just going to take this, I, I'll color that in yellow actually. We'll take that apart, okay? And then we're going to let u equal x square root of pi over 2, okay? And we end up getting, let's see, 0 square root of pi over 2, okay? And then... Here we get sine of u square du. And then here we have from 0 to 1, the inverse sine of x. All right, now, are these inverse functions to each other? Well, let's see. y is equal to sine of x squared, then finding the inverse, let's see, oh, square root that, this equals to x, aha, wait, but is this, is it plus or minus? Now you're probably thinking, is it plus or minus? Well, you can easily check by plugging in bounds, because remember that bounds plays an important role in this formula as well, right? If this was like negative one, then this would be, you know, a negative square root but we know for sure that this is just positive because of the bounds okay and a, a way to check okay like all right so we do have inverses but do the bounds do the are the bounds correct right and the way we check it is we plug in uh, a into f because remember that our formula looks like this our formula looks like this plus f of a, f of b, and then inverse function, okay? So the way we check if the bounds are correct is you plug in b into this function and it should come out like this. So if I plug in square root of pi over two to here, I get pi over two, sine pi over two does equal to one, okay, so that matches. Plug in zero, that equals to zero, which is what we got, and that matches. All right, cool, so that means that we can use this formula, the sum of inverses. So 
In that case, we just get, well, you know, 0 times 0 is 0. So, and this is just 1, so our answer is just square root of pi over 2. And that's it. That is our answer. So pretty much all we have to check, all we have to do is do a little bit of modification. So we're formatting it in terms of sum of inverses. And then check the function, make sure they are inverses. And check the bounds to make sure they are uh, corresponding to each other. Okay? Let's do another one. We have a very weird one. So this is this looks very weird because this looks nothing like inverse functions, right? They look nothing about they just don't co they don't seem to correspond to each other. So this is very tricky. So what do we do? How how do we how do we approach this? This looks a little suspicious because x squared plus 2x, we could, what if we complete the square here? Plus 1 minus 1? Let's, let's see. We have 0, 2. And we have cube root of x plus 1 squared minus 1. What is the inverse of this? I just, I just want to see what, what is the inverse of this? Right, we have y squared, and then we end up getting x cubed of y squared minus 1. x is equal to cube root of y squared minus 1. Ah, hmm, hmm, let u equal x plus 1 and we get something like this. Huh, interesting. I think we just solved it here. So this, just this portion, just this portion. This becomes, if we let u equal x plus 1, we get 1, 3, cube root of u squared minus 1 du. Okay? So what we have now, 0, 2, square root of 1 plus x cubed dx plus 1 third, I'm sorry, uh, one, 1 to 3 cube root of, uh, I'll just keep it u squared minus 1. Okay, so we know that they, they are inverses of each other, but do the bounds correspond to each other? Because they have to, they have to correspond to each other. Here, let's see, 2, if I plug in 2, I get, let's see, 1 plus 8, square root of 9, that's 3, very good. Plug in 0, we get 1. Cool, so they do correspond to each other. So by the sum of inverses, we get 6 as our answer. So the integral is equal to 6. You've probably already seen this from competitions or other viral videos of this integral. Um, maybe from your textbook as well. But we'll, st we'll still go over this. This is a 7th root. This is a cube root. And how do we go, how do we come across, uh, how do we approach this? So again, let's check our inverses. Cube root of 1 minus x7, 1 minus x to the power of 7. If we cube 1 minus y cube, we get, oh, sorry, 7 root, this does equal to x. Okay. Cool, but we have a negative, huh? So we pretty much have one to zero. Okay, but we have a negative here. Why do we have a negative here? Right? What is what is going on here? Huh. Well, if we do plus, and we have, let's say, oh, okay, maybe maybe there is a negative somewhere. I don't know, right? You're just probably thinking, okay, but where does that negative come from? Why do we need that negative? Well, let me show you. 
plug in the bounds. We get one, plug in one, we get zero. Ah, so even though, even though we have zero here, when, when we plug in one, we get zero. When we plug in zero, we get one. However, this is flipped. Does it matter? Actually, it does, right? This means that if, if we plug in one and it comes out zero, we need this to be zero and we need this to be one. Aha, uh -huh. so that's where that negative comes from. So that negative sign switches our bound. And now, now we can actually use the sum of inverses. So this is the correct formation. And of course, by sum of inverses, this equals to zero. So this integral equals to zero. Okay. Be very careful about that. Sometimes you do have to flip your bounds uh, awkwardly. Okay. It may not seem right, but it, it is part of the sum of inverses. When you plug in your bounds and it says zero to one, uh, you will get those cases where the bounds uh, will have to be a little, a little backwards. Okay. This looks like just straight up algebraic uh, bashing, but this is a little sus. Well, it's hard to tell if this is a sum of inverse, right? This just looks like some random algebra stuff. Um, but we can, I mean, this plus this, it just looks like, is there, there must be a purpose for this integral. Um, so let's see, if we try, well, let me color this in blue. If we try y equals square root of 2x plus x plus 1, I'm sorry, 2x over x plus 1. Let's see, we get y square uh, divide by 2. We have x over x plus 1. The same thing as 1 minus 1 over x plus 1. So we get, let's see, 1 minus y squared over 2. And then if we flip that, we get uh, 1 over this. I'm going to simplify it as 2, 2 minus y squared. So I pretty much did 1 over this. And then multiply 2 top and bottom. And go by fast to uh, to not waste time. Uh, minus one, right? That's that means minus two plus y square, right? That's this is all algebra that you already know. And it turns out that our inverse does turn out like this. So they are indeed inverse of each other. Okay, but. Do the bounds match? Do the bounds match? Let's see, if I plug in 1, I get 1 over 2 minus 1. Yep, so that matches. If I plug in 0, that becomes 0. Uh, yeah, it matches, right? Plug in 1, you get 1. Plug in 0, you get 0. So it does match. OK, so that's easy. That means that this would just equal to 1. 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0. This whole integral is just equal to 1. And that's it. Okay? That's our last integral. I know it seems very easy, uh, a little easy, but um, just be very careful. We will get over some trickier cases of using some of inverses. Okay? Alrighty. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part.